Right. So uh, this would be the final theorem on the syllabus. Uh, orthogonal circles. Right. So what do you uh, what do you call an what do you call orthogonal circles? Now, uh, when you have two circles intersecting one another, right? Uh, that means the center distance between two centers is less than the addition of the radii and greater than the difference absolute value of the difference of the radii. So when two circles are intersecting like this, right? So one uh, possibility can happen when now here these are the point of intersection. If we draw, if we draw tangents, tangents line, right? Tangent lines. At this point to both circles, now these standard lines, there will be an angle between these standard lines, right? There will be an angle. Suppose this is theta, right? If this theta, if theta is less than pi by 2 or greater than pi by 2, this is one possibility. This angle would be either less than pi, uh, pi by 2 or uh, greater than pi by 2. This is one possibility. Right. There is another possibility. When two circles are intersecting, these tangent lines, tangent line, right, they will be perpendicular to each other. See the other case. They will be perpendicular to each other. Now, if this is perpendicular to each other, that means this tangent line is perpendicular to this tangent line. So in, uh, this would be the normal line to this tangent line. If it is a normal, then it will definitely pass through the center of the other circle. Suppose this is C1 and this is C2. Now if this is perpendicular to this one, right, then this would pass through C2 as well. So uh, something uh, awesome happens here. Now here, this radius is R1, this radius is R2. These two circles are called orthogonal circles. Why? They are called orthogonal circles because the tangent lines drawn at the point of intersection are perpendicular to each other. Right? So in this case, theta, let's call it theta, theta equals pi by 2. Okay. Now suppose this point is P. In this case, what will happen is that PC1 is perpendicular to PC2. So these two circles are called orthogonal circle. Okay. These are not orthogonal circles because the angle is less than pi by 2 or greater than pi by 2. If that happens, they will not pass through the center of each of these circles. So not, not orthogonal. These are the two things. Now, when we have orthogonal circles, then we can use Pythagoras theorem and uh, obtain a relationship, derive a relationship. So, when you use the relationship, you can check whether directly the two circles are orthogonal or not. So, let's get to that now. Right. Since PC1 is perpendicular to PC2, PC2, PC1, C2. Now, uh, this line passes through uh, the center and this line passes through this center. PC1, PC, PC1, C2 is a right angle triangle. It's a right angle triangle. Okay. So, we can use Pythagoras theorem to get this. So, C1, C2 squared. This is the Pythagoras theorem. C1, C2 squared must be equal to R1 squared plus R2 squared. Now, uh, suppose the equation of the two circles are given, right? Let us take this is S1 and this is S2, right? Let's take S1 be x squared plus y squared plus 2g uh, x plus 2fy plus c equals 0. Okay, this is one equation. Then S2. Equation of the second circle is x squared plus y squared plus 2g. Let's call it prime. g prime x to f prime y plus c prime equals 0. Just to make the distinction. I have not written in the make distinction. Then cut in the better prime make that. Okay. Then uh, we can find r1 
this implies r1 is equal to so let's say r1 square then g square plus f square minus c this is r1 then r2 square is g prime square plus f prime square minus c prime okay what about centers c1 the center would be minus g minus f and center of the second circle uh, center coordinates of second circle would be minus g prime minus f prime minus g prime minus f prime okay now let's find c1 c2 square so we don't have to write down the square root here c1 c2 square would be minus g minus minus g prime square plus minus f minus f prime square so what do you get you get g prime minus g f prime minus f square now i can expand this out so let me write that 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 down as well okay let me expand this one if i expand this g prime square minus 2g g prime plus g square then from here f prime square minus 2f f prime plus f square okay now let's use this relationship let's use this relationship let's figure out what we can get uh, let me not do this right. this is just part of the so we have uh, g square plus f square minus c then this one g1 square plus f so prime square minus c prime must be equal to this one g prime square minus 2g g prime plus g square uh, plus f prime square minus 2f f prime plus f square so now notice here that g square cancels out g square f square cancels out f square and these two cancels out these two square so what is left what is left we have minus 2 uh, 2g g prime Uh, we have minus 2g g prime minus 2f f prime and we have minus c minus c prime so let's swap the places of these uh, sides then we get plus 2g g prime plus 2f f prime must be equal to c plus c prime so this is the relationship now if this condition is met if this condition is met that means the two circles are orthogonal this is the only condition. So you have to memorize this one. We have to keep the three orthogonal circles. May circles are orthogonal. Then we have to find the specific value of the three. We have to find the value of the g prime, g prime, c prime, c prime. So we should, you should know this relationship. Make a dana. So we have to find the value of the three. We have to find the value of the three. We have to find the value of the three. Two, g, g prime. That means, we have to find the multiplication. Two i's, this. Then two i's, multiplication of these two. A equal to C plus C1, C prime term, then we get orthogonal circles. So let's look at an example now. Right. Let's check if the two circles are orthogonal or not. These are the two circles. If they are orthogonal, uh, this condition must be satisfied. So if orthogonal, right, this condition must be satisfied. 2 times G, G prime plus 2 times F, F prime must be equal to c plus c prime right. so we have to obtain g uh, values for g and g prime so g must be equal let's take this one uh, so uh, divide this by uh, minus 2 so you get 3 that's a uh, sorry so it should be a so plus 2 g x plus 2 f y then here plus 2g prime x plus 2f prime y okay notice here 2g in this case 2g must be equal to minus 6 so that means g is minus 3 right. then 2g prime must be equal to 8 so g prime must be equal to 4 then 2f must be equal to 4 which means f is equal to 2 
to f prime must be equal to 2, which means f prime must be equal to 1. So what about c? c is equal to 2 and c prime is equal to minus 22. Now say, left hand side, LHS is equal to GG prime plus 2FF prime. Then uh, 2 times minus 3 plus 4 plus 2 times plus 2 into 1. What do you get? 8, so minus 24. Then here we have plus 4, the answer is minus 20. Minus 20. Okay. Then right hand side. R H S. Right hand side is C plus C prime. So what is C? C is equal to 2 and C prime is minus 22. So the answer is minus 20. Minus 20. Which means LHS equal RHS. This implies there are four circles. S1 equals 0 and S2 equals 0 are orthogonal circles. If the question says that the two circles are orthogonal, then probably they would have not given you either one of these uh, six terms. Either one of these six terms. They would have not given. Right? Then you have to calculate one of these uh, terms. Right? Supposing that the two circles are orthogonal. Right, thank you for watching.